Still waiting on that Comet Lake CPU, but hey, I got another motherboard in the meantime, and this one is B460 chipset based. Hi guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. As you all pretty much know, with each new generation of Intel CPUs, we more often than not also get a new generation of chipsets and motherboards, usually accompanied by a different CPU socket. With that comes new feature sets, where they are sometimes more generous and sometimes less, with just the minor feature bumps. The jump from previous generation to this one is a good example of just that, where they made basically minimal changes to the chipsets, with a dash of inconvenience for the existing users who were maybe planning to upgrade their CPUs down the road. Sprinkle that magic a bit. No, you cannot upgrade your CPUs. A bit more. A bit more. In the context of the Comet Lake desktop series of CPUs, we have six new chipsets, two of them used for the embedded solutions, the Q470 and W480, while for us, so to speak, regular users, we have a pretty common palette to choose from, with a bumped up first number in naming scheme compared to the previous generation, ranging from the most equipped Z490 chipset all the way down to the H410 with the H470 and B460 chipsets in between, which are today's topic of this video. Since both of these chipsets, or for that matter any other chipset except this one that I'm about to mention, lack two major features in comparison to the Z490 chipset, and that's the ability to overclock the unlocked Intel's K CPUs and SLI support, it really doesn't matter which one you choose, H470 or B460. You would maybe think that there is a lot of discrepancies in features because there are different chipsets in question, especially since the B460 series is more oriented towards business users. So it boils down to two major things, amount of PCI Express lanes and native USB connections delivered by the chipset itself. Here the H470 chipset has a small advantage over the B460 chipset, where it has four more PCI Express lanes and supports for up to four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, whereas the B460 chipset doesn't natively support USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports at all. Intel was a bit cheeky with their specifications of the B460 chipset when it comes to its USB configuration. You can see that they are mentioning the USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, so if you would to glance over you would maybe think that it has it, but when you take a closer look you can see that it says up to 0 USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. What? If it's zero, why would you even mention that? It's definitely a bit weird and before all, unnecessary. Anyhow, what does matter is what the actual motherboard manufacturer brings to the table, because although the chips and specifications are one thing, what's actually found on a certain motherboard can differ from one model to another. For example, take a look at MSI's MAG B460 Tomahawk model, They've decided to implement additional S-Media ISM3241 controller, which enabled them to put a USB 3.2 Gen 2 20 gigabits per second type C port on the back. So even if you have a lower tier chipset, it doesn't mean you cannot enjoy some of those extra features. Although, as I said, both of these chipsets do not support NVIDIA's SLI multi-GPU technology, they do support AMD's Crossfire X, as long as you have at least two physical X16 slots, so you'll be able to configure such multi-GPU setups since they are driver and or API based and not limited by any other requirement. If you're interested in how Crossfire X works with two RX 5700 XTs, or how AMD now calls it, multi-GPU, be sure to hop over to my video of it, there will be a link to it in the right top corner. One example of such motherboard based on the B460 chipset is Astrox B460 Pro model, which I have here with me, and this is going to be one of their more budget-oriented contenders since it carries the Pro 4 naming, which is most often associated with those kind of value models. Astrox tried to overdress this model a bit for what it is, but that's not to say it's a bad thing, on the contrary. Since a lot of people go for more budget and value-oriented options, why shouldn't they also enjoy a decent and clean-looking motherboard design, which is exactly what the B460 Pro is. They have this very smooth metal brushed finish to their heatsinks of the chipset and power design, as well as for the long cold plate for the M.2 slot on the bottom. This, accompanied by mostly black PCB design with some hint of white graphics, resulted in this pretty appealing contrasty scheme. 
Obviously, this model is not the most equipped one out there, but it will most certainly satisfy the needs of majority of users who plan to use something like an Intel's i5-10400 or other locked CPUs and pair it with a decent graphics card. But it is a full-sized ATX motherboard with a total of four PCI Express slots, two of them being X1 3.0 slots, and as I hinted, another two 3.0 slots of X16 length, one having X16 and the other one X4 electrical configuration. Besides the two regular M.2 slots that I found placed between them, we have another M.2 key E slot for Wi-Fi Bluetooth module, which is why you can see an antenna mount on the back IOs, although it's a bit impractical that they placed it on the far left, so you'll have to stretch their connection cables basically all across the motherboard. Since we are already here, we can check out the back IO connections. It's pretty modest, we have a total of just 6 USB ports, 2 of them being USB 2.0 ports and 4 USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, so basically your regular 5 gigabits per second USB 3.0 ports, with one of them as Type-C port. Other than that, there's an HDMI and VGA video output. Yeah, a VGA output, it's a business-oriented chipset, and in that business circles, VGA is still a thing. Gigabit LAN and basic setup of audio connections, although it does carry Realtake's ALC1200 audio chipset, which supports 7.1 audio, but you actually do not have any connections on the motherboard itself that could take advantage of it. Yeah, the back I.O. does feel a bit empty, it's more than obvious that they did some cost cutting here. You can actually see empty spots for components with solder pad points. They probably used this layout and PCB design for a couple of their other models, but in the end it's a $100 motherboard after all. Right next to that we have a LGA1200 CPU socket, surrounded by two big passive heatsinks, making contact with the power delivery system, and here we have a combination of Poden's DEC3908X as the high side and DEC3906X as the low side MOSFETs, which are known to get hot, so I don't think they will be on top of anyone's wishlist. Those are then combined with 50 amp power chokes, UP9521R PWM controller and UP1962 doublers on the back side of the PCB, forming a 9-phase power design. That's not something you would consider it beefy, but having in mind what kind of CPUs are probably going to be used on it, it will most likely be more than enough, although I was a bit worried when I saw Hardware Unboxed latest video on budget Z490 motherboard models, where one model was using almost the same VRM components and power design, and that one turned out to be far from impressive in that field, so feel free to check that video out later on. There's a total of 4 DDR4 DIMM slots which supports speeds up to 2933 MHz with the Core i7 and Core i9 CPUs and up to 2666 MHz with the Core i5, i3, Pentium and Celeron CPUs, which is another limitation surrounding this chipset, but not a major one for most of the builds which plan to use this chipset. In terms of the other memory, storage in particular, I've already mentioned the two M.2 slots that support PCI Express Gen 3 X4 and SATA 3 speeds, one of which supports both, and the second one only PCI Express, while you will get a total of six regular SATA 3 ports, four of them right angled on the right edge of the motherboard, and two placed vertically in the bottom right corner. For that you will also receive two SATA cables from the bundle. Despite being a B460 chipset based motherboard, ASRock didn't miss a chance to, well, put some RGBs onto this model. We have a subtle line of RGB goodness which is made out of few LEDs put underneath the right side of the motherboard, while they also put two regular 12 volt RGB and two 5 volt addressable RGB headers. Who said you cannot have fun on the job? In terms of the other headers on the motherboard, we have your most common USB 2.0 and 3.0 headers, two of each, Thunderbolt AIC connector, front panel audio connector and a total of seven fan headers, which is actually impressive, couple of boot LED indicators, which comes in handy when trying to troubleshoot potential problems. All in all, when you draw the line, the B460 motherboards can also be decently equipped considering what their chipset is meant for, just like this one. In its baseline, you won't lose a lot compared to the H470 chipset, that's for sure, but it all comes down to what exact model are you looking at and what's your budget. 
For example, comparing this model with its H470 counterpart, which is the Micro ATX H470M Pro 4 model, as they don't have an ATX version of it, they still do have a lot of similarities feature-wise, except the of course USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and a tad more PCI Express lanes, both of them coming natively, and of course the size of the motherboards, but other than that, they are really comparable. The difference in price between them is around $5, which is really minimal, so it makes you think a bit. Again, it all comes down to what extra features are you looking for, because in their core they will do the same job. It's not like you're in search for overclocking capabilities and you have to go down the Z490 road. Of course, you can also double down to H410 chipset series with a motherboard based on it, get just the bare bone necessities and channel the rest of the budget towards other components. That's a more than a good route to go for, just bear in mind that models with those chipsets usually carry very simple power delivery solutions, meaning not suitable for higher end CPUs when it comes to high sustained load, as well as only two RAM slots. That's it for this time for me, thank you once again for watching, please take a second to toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content, that really helps a lot, and if you like what you saw feel free to subscribe, and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video. And until then, catch you later, guys.